a visit to a bookstore selling all the newest books can hold interesting surprises. I was very surprised to find this book, written in 1979, which seems to have been quite popular back then. It's called Dr. Cooper's Fuel's Fructose Diet, and it's basically a weight loss diet in which the magic ingredient is the sugar, fructose. Not only you have to carefully select your food based on their fructose content, but you're required to add a certain amount of fructose yourself to the foods you eat. Since then, the fate of fructose has changed. Today, fructose and especially high fructose corn syrup are often accused of being worse than other types of sugar and to play a major role in the diffusion of obesity. So what's the real story? Is fructose better or worse than other sugars? Or isn't there really that much difference? Dr. Cooper had a point. Like we already said, fructose has at least one big advantage over glucose, namely that its glycemic index is much lower. This is because intestinal absorption of fructose is passive and doesn't use carriers like glucose or galactose, so it's much slower. Besides, fructose in itself does not stimulate insulin release as much as glucose. So all in all, its effect on insulinemia is much more modest, sparing us all the unwanted secondary effects of insulin. Another advantage is that fructose is sweeter than glucose or sucrose, so less of it is needed to achieve the same level of sweetness. But fructose also comes with some problems. First, because of its slow absorption, if we eat too much fructose, some of it will go through without being absorbed, reach our colon, draw water, and cause diarrhea. Then, while active absorption of sugar requires some energy, fructose absorption is energy-free. Since most of us already eat too many calories, saving energy is not necessarily something we want when it comes to our body. Another thing with fructose is that it enters glycolysis, the sequence of reactions to extract energy from sugars, at a later stage than glucose, skipping an important regulatory step, the one of the rate-limiting enzyme, PPK. Thus, if we have excess energy, fructose may be catabolized and converted to fat faster than glucose, without being subjected to any feedback regulation. In reality, however, this biochemical fact doesn't appear to make a big difference. The real problem is another one. Fructose does not cross the blood-brain barrier the way glucose does, and so it doesn't signal short-term satiety. This is the main argument used by its accusers. Since it doesn't simulate satiety, added fructose may promote overeating and weight gain more than glucose or sucrose. These accuse is also a little bit exaggerated, since we don't eat fructose alone, but together with other ingredients. Even in soft drinks, it's water that fills our stomach. We don't really drink more soda if it's sweetened with fructose than we would if sucrose were used. Fructose, as its name suggests, is the characteristic sugar of fruit. Together with glucose, it makes sucrose, our common table sugar. Another major source of fructose in our diet is high fructose corn syrup which is obtained from cornstarch following an enzymatic treatment to split it into glucose and then turn some of that glucose into fructose to make it sweeter. Since it can be obtained easily and cheap, and it's very versatile because it's liquid, the food industry likes it a lot and widely uses it to sweeten soft drinks, candies, jellies, yogurts, cakes, cookies, sauces, and many other items. What you may not know is that high fructose corn syrup is usually 55% fructose and 45% glucose. If you compare it to plain table sugar, which is 50% fructose and 50% glucose, you can easily see how the difference between the two is almost irrelevant. The way I see it, HFCS isn't any worse than plain sugar or any source of pure sugar, but it's not any better either. Added sugar is bad, be it glucose, fructose, or sucrose. And just like any other product with added sugar, consumptions of products with fructose or HFCS in their ingredients list must be limited as much as possible. As far as fruit is concerned, with its naturally occurring fructose coming with fibers, vitamins, minerals, and health promoting bioactive compounds, we are encouraged to eat it regularly, happy that fructose allows for a lower glycemic index while fiber will take care of satiety.